Sige, magandang hapon uh, sa lahat na nandito ngayon. Uh, this is our final week of the MWF Online Sports Forum. Ang bilis lang, no? Uh, for those of you who may be asking, ito po. Online Sports Forum, this is our final week. Uh, starting this Monday with Coach Rudiger Harksen of Germany. He will be speaking about best practices of German athletics program. On Wednesday, we have an Italian basketball coach, Coach Christian Arciso, to speak about his experience in Denmark uh, as a youth basketball coach. He will speak about the cognitive approach on youth development. It will be on May 13 at 3, again, 3 p.m. All throughout uh, this week, it's 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And finally, our last speaker, our 21st speaker, uh, will be Coach Owen Southgate, an English football coach uh, currently based in Sweden, and he will speak about instilling lifelong values throughout sports. Sa mga nagtatanong, uh, um, ano tong ginagawa namin, alam nyo naman, nung nagsimula yung, yung quarantine, uh, it really created uh, so much limitations for all of us, but then we discovered that with that limitation also came with opportunities online and it was easier to connect people and that's the that's the essence of, of this of this gathering to stay connected in fact that that's the the, the theme of, of this forum building bridges through sports uh, now I sa dalawang oras na to at baka lumampas ng konti let's take the opportunity to get to know new people in our field or in other fields in other sports uh, and let's take this time also to learn and make sure to add knowledge to, 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 to our uh, information bank. As I move forward, gusto ko lang pong hingin ulit na itong instruction, add a letter before your name. Put a letter C if you're a coach. Put a letter A before an, if you're an athlete. S if you're a sports leader. And then N if you're a non-sports individual. You can edit your name. Check lang po dyan sa tablet nyo or sa laptop or sa cellphone. You can click a small icon there and you will see your name and you can click rename. Pwede nyo nang ma-edit. I'll just make it fast. Pinakamahalaga rito, pen and paper. Make sure you have a pen and paper. Sulat ng lahat na pwede nyo malaman. Uh, pag may idea kayong makita, bago yata yun, maganda yata yun, isulat nyo. And then place your mic to mute setting. Isula, uh, make sure that when you are listening, i-mute nyo lang yung inyong mga microphone para mas madali. Uh, also, when we do the breakout rooms later, in a few minutes we'll do the breakout rooms, make sure that you connect. You don't only share, you also listen. You get to know sino yung mga makakasama nyo. Uh, in a few minutes, we will do two breakout rooms to give you a feel of how it is. Paano tayo magkakaroon ng breakout rooms. And then next, share. Malaga mag-share mamaya, especially in that uh, longer breakout room. Later on, we'll have a 10 to 15 breakout rooms after the part one of Coach Rudiger. And then uh, it would be uh, a more, it would be an opportunity for us to share more of ourselves. And last, meron ng mga nagta-type, may mga nabasa na ako, type in our chat box, QRTR. So kung mapapansin natin, meron tayong chat box. Bagagamitin ko na ngayon. Oh, up, sandali lang. Meeting. Alright. QRT type. QRTR. Dapat may makita kayo dyan ngayon. Very good. From Josh. May nakita ko. Letter N. Okay? So make sure mag-type kayo dyan. Kung may mga realizations, may mga tanong, please. Please do type them there. Again, our program would have this parts. We have two parts talk, 15 minutes each. And then we have two reactors today. And then there will be breakout rooms. And this is something that I always love doing. Breakout rooms where you get to meet other people by, on, by random and then you get to share your thoughts. May mga questions coming if a flash. And then Q&A with speaker later. And then our class picture. Of course, hindi, natin to, hindi, magagawa, hindi namin magagawa ang breakout rooms kung wala itong mga online facilitators. Nagpapasalamat ako kay uh, galing ito, all-star cast po ito. Uh, I would like to say thank you again to from from Luzon, see si Coach Belay uh, of uh, Belay Fernando of Philippine Football Federation, head of women's football, uh, Coach Asli, uh, head coach of Ayak Juniors of the, from the NCAA, uh, Coach Oliver Almadro, uh, our champion UAAP coach volleyball, um, 
And then Coach Sandy Arispaco Chaga later on, Ahabul Shah. Currently, he is the head coach of our national youth basketball team. Uh, in Visayas, we are joined by Mr. Rico Navarro of the Cebu Schools Athletic Foundation Incorporated and currently the sports director of Ateneo de Cebu. In Mindanao, I am joined by Will, Tolitz, and Mary, itong nasa gitna, all from Ateneo de Davao. And the uh, bottom left is Gian uh, of Ateneo de Zamboanga. She is currently an incoming third-year college student. Later on, makakasama natin ang dalawang reactors na ang puso at isip nasa athletics, nasa track and field, nasa running. Si Ernel Abara, founder and meet manager ng Mindanao Blue Knights Track League or MBKTL na kasalukuyang nasa Hungary pursuing his PhD in sports and social sciences. And of course, one of the leaders that I truly admire and respect not only in Mindanao but in the Philippines, Coach Sak Sabeliano, performance coach of the Run Out of Poverty. Ru or Ru. And later on, papakilala rin natin to, ito, the man of the hour, the person that is responsible why we are all here. Uh, Coach Rudiger Harksen will speak about best practices in the German athletics program. So, siya po, uh, we've, I've talked to him last week and then in the few minutes that we've talked via Zoom, ang dami ko na agad natutunan, lalo na sa kultura ng club-based athletics. And kahit po hindi kayo nasa athletics, makinig lang kayo sa kanya, sa kanyang wisdom, sa kanyang knowledge. And related to, to your sport, you can definitely do so much. So, we will now go into our breakout rooms. Our first breakout rooms, magpapakilala tayo. Sorry, nalagay ko pa rito, good morning. So, but it is it. good morning in Germany right now. Good afternoon. All right, it's good afternoon today. Magpakilala ka. I am, I am from. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Kung asan ka ngayon sa Pilipinas, nasa Luzon, nasa Visayas, nasa Mindanao, nasa Manila ka ba, nasa Cebu, nasa kung saan. Or, and then pakilala rin, anong grupo niyo? Ano ang kinabibilangan niyo? And then, what do you expect to learn today? Sabihin niyo sa mga groupmates niyo, kahit hindi niyo pa sila kilala, ano ang nais niyong matutunan? And lastly, ito, very important ito. Nakapanood na ba kayo ng track and field event live? or on TV. Ano ba yung napano, na kung nasanay kayo sa DepEd at sa mga city meet lang, baka nasanay kayo na hindi uh, track oval talaga tinatakbuhan. Baka yung pag nadapa ang isang bata, delikadong masugatan or ma-injured for life. So, ikwento nyo yan ng konti. Meron kayong five minutes dyan. At ito rin, i-describe nyo yung energy na nakita nyo sa isang track and field event. Mamaya si Coach Ernel at si Coach Tax, kikwentuhan nila kayo yung mga nakikita nilang magaganda sa loob at sa labas ng Pilipinas. At of course, si Coach Rudiger will give us his main thoughts about athletics later on. Okay? So, are you ready na po ba for the breakout rooms? Thumbs up if you're ready. Thumbs up? Alright. Sandali lang. I'm just gonna make sure that we are all, I'm gonna recreate. All right, we create all rooms. All right, you have five minutes po to, to do the sharing. And after nito, uh, the online facilitators, I will ask some of you to share what you have picked up. Oops, marami pang humahabol. I'm just going to bring them later to you guys. Options, five minutes and 60 seconds. All right. Again, thumbs up, everyone. Thumbs up, ready to go. So again, thumbs up if nakapagsalita kayo, all right? As of the moment, we have 77 and now entering 78. I'm going to ask a few of our facilitators. Let's start, let's start with one of the youngest facilitators, Rico Navarro of Cebu. Ayan, gusto kong pangitain si Rico. Yan ang gusto ko, na youngest. The youngest. The youngest. Yes. Yes. Now, we have a mixed group. Maganda to. We have UM Tagum, wow. Lasal, and Mandaluyong or PNU. And right. with, 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 various, uh, with various experiences. Ang pinaka right, right. dito is two of them are former athletes and actual coaches also. And one is an official who officiated in the last Southeast Asian Games. Ah, perfect. Uh, uh, the, the best feeling, the ang pinaka common denominator among what they said was the adrenaline rush of an event, of the track and field event. You know, number one that stands out in a track and field event. Adrenaline rush. Now, you know, uh, yes. to be honest, 
I wasn't so much into athletics before I transferred to Ateneo de Davao in 2013, but being exposed to it through one of our speakers, through Coach Ernel, talagang namahal, minahal ko siya, talagang sabi ko, I'm just so happy that we have it here in Ateneo de Davao. Uh, Rico, maraming salamat. Uh, Coach Oliver Almadro, UAAP champion coach and a regular facilitator in this forum. Coach O, sino mga naging kasama mo dyan? Well, sa akin lang, most of the ano na dito eh. Si, problema lang, si Jose Mosca, wala siyang hike and wala siyang, mm -hmm. ano, eh, wala siyang video but it's okay. I have with me Miss Maria Hortola and Karin Mandin. They are not really into athletics but sometimes uh, they are asked to, to play or to coach or to teach but so they really want something uh, input na pag, pag in athletics kasi you know naman marami ngayon in, 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 a, in a company in a school you really have to teach right away or to, to play in biglaan so they really want to something here to learn from the coaches here and athletes uh, especially in athletics so right. they are from Davao and and Caraga Wow. So, at talagang, at of course, sabi nga, uh, meron, may mga nagpaminsan, may nagme-message sa akin na, Coach, pwede po bang ilagay mo kami sa, sa group ni Coach O para makilala na? <laughs> so, sana walang mag-message na sa akin ngayon kasi tumatawa si Joan Kinosolango. Parang gusto niyang mag makasama sa grupo mo. I-message mo ako, <laughs> Joan, at mamaya isusok ko lang, sharing is learning. <laughs> yes. Uh, again, uh, narinig natin, no? sabi nga, uh, ito, binibiro ko to lagi. Alam ko na kapag baguhan ng isang DepEd teacher sa isang lugar, Sabi niya, paano mo coach malalaman kapag siya ang coach ng athletics team nila kapag city meet? Kasi yan yata yung iniiwasan. Kasi laging mainit, uh, talagang pahirapan ang pag-practice, wala kang mapapraktisan. Uh, but, uh, but I'm happy that slowly nakikita ko yung pagbabagong binibigay sa athletics. And I hope that with, with efforts like this, those who love athletics, we will really bring athletics up there and then make it as popular as the ball sports. And I'm very grateful. Uh, from one season coach, let's go to another season coach. Uh, from one volleyball UAAP coach, pupunta ko sa isang UAAP basketball coach and former national team. At feeling ko alam niya nang siyang tatawagin ko. Nag-unmute na siya. Coach Heidi Ong. Hi, magandang hapon. Um, my group is well represented. We have from Luzon, Coach, coach Joseph C., who is a CSB coach uh, and a PSC consultant as well. Uh, si Coach Jerome from Davao, a coach from futsal and football, and si Sir Crescentio from Cebu naman. So, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao kami, kompleto wow, kami. Wow, wow. Uh, I think they really wanted to learn uh, because yeah, our speaker is from Germany. They will learn a lot. They're very excited. Um, same, yung feeling nila every time they watch an athletics event, just like me. Uh, it's very exciting, especially on the relay. And yeah. the sprinting, yung 100 meter dash. So, ayan, we're very excited for this forum. Thank you, Coach Nali. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, one, of the, my, one of my personal favorites sa isang athletic event is, I don't know, pero hindi ko ito nakikita ang ginagawa sa lahat, pero yung pag nagmamarch ang athletes, yung sa umpisa, magmamarch sila lahat. And I so love it. And again, nagpapasalamat ako sa mga exposure na binibigay sa akin na nung isa sa ating mga reactors ngayon, no, yung talagang uh, ginawa niya dito sa Davao, yung nakikita niya ginagawa sa Europa kasi every year for the past four years pupunta siya sa Czech Republic, sa Germany and when, when he would come back to, to Davao City talaga pinapakita niya sa amin yung mga ginagawa doon and I'm just so happy that I hope that after this forum uh, kung asan man tayo sa Pilipinas magagawa natin yung konting pagbabago I'm, I'm, you know, I'm also happy that I have, a, I have a familiar name na nakita kong pumasok Sharon Madarimot ng Oroquieta City Sa Oroquieta City, uh, malapit yan sa akin. And Sharon, thank you very much for coming. So coaches, I also see that we have an Olympian and track and field coach in attendance right now, Stax. Pumasok siya, Tony ben Benson. 1972 uh, Munich Olymp... Munich, it's not in Munich, no? 1972 Munich Olympics. In 1972, he was one of the five distance runners in the world in 1992 when the dream team in Barcelona was being talked about coach Tony Benson was the head coach of the Australian national team and coach Tony Benson is joining us today and so much power there coach Rudiger of Germany and coach Tony Benson here with Australia what we're so blessed that we are having this forum today Athlet the athletics god must be smiling today 
uh, to, to, to be able to have this. So now, guys, thumbs up if you're ready to be for another breakout. All right. This time, enjoy and learn. Press breakout room. ko pa ng reporter kami sa TV. <laughs> Back to you. Dahil ka lang. Um, so, <laughs> so um, ang nakusap ko po sa aking um, small group ay si Coach Lindo of Nuevo Vizcaya. Aba, Chelsea. talented yan. Si Coach Cesar of Lipa City and then Coach Ronald or mga referee pala to. Coach Ronald of Paranaque City. So, they want to learn yung mga innovation and strategies. Yung mga kasama ko po ano eh yung mga official ng track and field all yeah. around daw sila eh. So, hindi yes, that's hindi true. hindi maka focus So, pero they have a grasp of all the other um, functions and they, um but they really want to focus on track and field and to learn more about the sport. So, obviously, naka-experience na sila ng live ng track and field meet kasi official nga sila. Yeah. Um, um, maraming, <laughs> yes. Maraming salamat, uh, field reporter, uh, Belay Fernando, ha? Grabe, very talented tong ating mga mga facilitators. And again, uh, if you do not know it, Belay uh, is really one of the most talented Filipina to ever play football for our country. And I'm, we're so happy that uh, she she has spent many of her MWF being with us and helping facilitate the the discussion. Maraming salamat, Belay. Uh, uh, from one from from Luzon, uh, I'll go to Mindanao. Ask another talented young lady, the youngest in. From fo kung football si Pelay, ito naman ang Michael Jordan ng Zamboanga City sa women's basketball. Nag-celebrate pa lang ng kanyang 21st birthday kahapon. Gian De La Cruz, ano, lamang, ano ang handa mo kahapon? Uh, cake, nice. spaghetti, coach. <laughs> basic, basic simple lang. Basic. Right. Simple lang. Ikaw so, na pinadalahan <laughs> ng greetings ng mga national, ng mga national coaches. Opo. Head coaches at siyempre mga talented na tao sa larangan ng sports. So, um, going back for our breakout room, siyempre, um, I'm glad to meet new people. I was with uh, Sir Ivan Wezan, uh, a sports director. From, Davao, uh, from yes. 11. Yes, um, Coach Samuel Alcos, a swimming coach. Uh, si Ma'am Jeanette Obiena, uh, uh, isa sa mga nakapanood na ng live na track and field na event at sa SEA Games. And wow. I was amazed I'm with her in that breakout. And si Coach, uh, si Sir John Michael Niegas. Uh, Siyempre lahat po gusto nilang matut uh, to have a wider knowledge about athletics and ano yung positive practices nila and mostly anong mangyayari sa mga example students na athletics kung saan sila napupunta in the future kasi uh, somewhat sabi nga ni coach Sam, Sam Alcos um, hindi lahat nabibigyan ng opportunity so paano nila na na, na progress yun at nabibigyan ng pagkakato ng mga at, mga athletics uh, sa to to proceed doon sa sports nila so yan po coach Thank you, Gian. And our final, I'll ask for uh, our last chair, at least for the first round, uh, one of our guest uh, facilitators today. And there's a request here. Uh, please speak English so that Coach Rudiger can also understand more, especially the expectation. Oops, natakot na siya. Hinawakan na yung ilong. Baka mag nosebleed ka. Koy. So, italagang sinadya kung ikaw ang tawagin. Koy Canarias, young sports leader here. <coughs> and now, Koy, in English, please. Uh, ano yung mga na na natutunan mo sa grupo mo? I'll try my best to speak in English. All right. I'll try my best. So, um, on those two bre breakout sessions that I had, um, I met a few people. Um, most of them are coming from Luzon and Mindanao. So, basically, on my second breakout, I had Coach Britt, 
of MPBL, yeah. MPBL Basketball of Zamboanga. So yeah. he's currently based in Zamboanga, and basically what he's um, expecting for this session is that he's gonna learn more on how to incorporate um, athletics into his sports, um, basketball. So the same way with our second. Uh, the second person in our group, which is Miss Ima, psychologist, she's also trying to integrate athletics on um, psychology, on dealing with the students. So, um, on our sharing also, both of them already saw um, an event in athletics. And really, that, that feeling of a point second difference between the winner, the second place, and the third place, based on the ranking, is... I think that's bringing the adrenaline rush on you know on the viewers, and then there's a question that we're having here. Um, what will be the prepar What are the best things, or that they are giving their athletes there in Germany that they could actually apply here in the Philippines, especially on the preparation part? Right. Best practices. Don't worry. Pasok na pasok yan. Daniel, please take note of that because definitely that's one of the questions we should be asking later. So again, uh, let's give a silent round of applause to all the online facilitators who share their thoughts on... Okay. So now we are going to proceed to... Uh... All right. Again, our top topic this afternoon is about best. Sandali lang. I'm going to... mute lang po. Again, i-remind ko lahat. Please put... All right, now you're in mute. Again, the man of the hour is Coach Rudiger Harksen, uh, a seasoned German athletics coach who has really done so much contribution to the field of athletics in Germany. To introduce him this afternoon so that we will appreciate more the, the seasoned individual who will speak to us for the next 30 minutes and then ask and then answer important questions. I would like to ask the person who brought him to our group, one of our reactors this afternoon, Professor Ernel Abara of Budapest, Hungary. Ernel? Nakamute ka? Thank you, Coach Nodi. Yes, um... I would like to introduce our speaker this morning, uh, Coach Ludiger Harksen. Okay. okay. So, Coach Ludiger Harksen, I met him way back in 2016 in Mannheim, Germany, during our stint, during our visit there. Of course, his credentials are as follows. He is uh, he completed degree on sport and German philology at the University of Heidelberg. And currently, he holds a license level A at the German Track and Field Federation and completed his second state examination in the following years. His professional career includes currently a full-time coach of the Athletic Federation or the German Track and Field Association and national coach of the said federation and hurdle and swing for females up to the present. Currently, he is also the head coach on the national team of Germany in track and field. Some of his achievements are as follows. He coached uh, Miss Nicole Leichtsch at 1984 LA Olympics and Claudia Sakiewicz in bronze medal in 1988 Seoul Olympics and also coached the relay team of the German national team for world championship and also in the 2017 Bahamas World Relay Championships where they were champions to, uh, defeating uh, United States, Jamaica, during that time. And his further activities, currently he is the lecturer of the German Track and Field Association at all trainer levels, including diploma coach training, head of competitive athletics at the top club, MTG Mannheim in Mannheim, Germany, and of course, with all four, more than 40 years of experience in athletic and management. So um, that's all, Coach Nolly. Uh, again, I would like to introduce to you Mr. Rudiger Harksen. Let's give uh, Coach Rudiger a silent round of applause, everyone. Okay. 
Coach Rudiger, it's your turn. Hi. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. From Germany to the Philippines, I hope you have uh, better weather conditions than we do have in Germany right now. It's raining, it's cold, and uh, so because, <clears throat> uh, because we do not have that much time that morning, let me start. Uh, let me come to the point to speak about track and field, uh, best practices in Germany. Maybe Anel can give me a slide where I can. <clears throat> yeah, okay. that's fine. Thank you. Can everybody see this slide? Yes, really good. Okay, okay. So, uh, dear colleagues, uh, I'm speaking about the individual sport. A track and field is individual, and many of them, many of you, sorry, as I uh, got now the information, are club or team coaches. And uh, but I think there are some rules, there are some common things that combine all the sports uh, under the special view. How important is a coach? How important is the working as a coach? We all are coaches, and uh, it doesn't depend what system you have. Do you have a club system, or as we do have in the United States, or as I heard in your country, the college system? Um, well, I think uh, the most important of all is the individual personality as a coach that you have, that you work. Well, but let me speak about uh, the system in Germany. Well, we do have 7,000 clubs and 20 regional associations spread all over the Republic of Germany and one big uh, federal association, the German DLV. Uh, associations. So uh, club development in Germany starts uh, with children at the age of about five to seven <clears throat> and many of them are coached by volunteer coaches at this age. Club work is the hard and the basic fundamental work of any track and field development and the clubs are working autonomous the clubs get their money by membership fees and some bigger clubs with uh, good organizations, they're able to acquire some sponsorships and only a few clubs can employ full-time coaches for working with those young uh, children starting the track and field. And in the, in the recent years, uh, we can state a progressive graph of new members in our clubs with young uh, children and with pupils and uh, youth athletes. Well, there is one thing I, I think I have, we can state, let me say all over the world, we can state that there is compared to earlier times a general lack of movement in our society, a kind of sedentary, owed to the digital modern times with computers, iPad, handies, or Netflix. So the movement, the sports, the youth, and the children is compared to earlier times is a little bit reduced. So, when children start and come in our clubs, we intend a long-term training process. We don't want them to come and go next year. We intend a long-term training process, but when they are getting older, when the children are getting older, um, some of them stay, some of them leave us because many unexperienced coach have, uh, want to have very early success with these athletes. They train hard, not according to the biological and the training age. The result is overtraining or losing motivation. And the youth athletes stop track and field and begin fun sports or something like that. That's a development we, we see in the recent years. But uh, 
there's a question that many coaches ask me all over the world. Hey, Germany, you have a big country with 81 million people and you have not one man who's running the 100 meter faster than 10 seconds. How is this possible? So I think, so we have to face the phenomenon of the talent. What is a talent? And uh, we have to focus our main work to develop talents in, in, in Germany and the best way and find the best way to bring them later on in a good performance. A talent, a talent is no more a young girl or boy that has excellent preconditions like athletic facilities, athletic body and tropometrical facilities, technical movements, very good coordination movements, or a good physiology. That's a talent. Many of them are said to be the champions of the future. But what happens in reality? Many of them are not willing to work hard. They spoil their talent. And maybe you know, dear colleagues, maybe you know the sentence, the dictionary, the dictionary is the only place where success comes before work. We need hard work, we need hard motivation, we need the best support to develop a talent to a champion we want to make out of him. So, in Germany, we try to sort the talents out, we sort them out, and bring them in regional and federal courses, so-called cadres, where we give the talents special courses with well-experienced coaches, and uh, we call it cadre work or cadre making. So it's, it's divided into several levels. We have the, the club level, we have the federal level, step two and step three. That's the uh, federal level where the best of our talents are supported and get courses so weekly, monthly, it's in training camps and something like this, training camps. Um, that's, that's a very uh, uh, individual system. But most important for young athlete is that the sports development is supported by the school situation. So we created in recent years elite school of sports with the so-called concentration of the dual system. That's a good cooperation between training and school subjects. And the time schedule is made in this way that there can be training made one twice a day in combination with the school subjects and uh, so we hope in the future to make better results than we did we know we do results we won we are one of the top five or six uh, track and field countries in the world but uh, we want to improve and we try to find the best way the basic is the club system surely that's the fundamentum of all but we have our federations, we have our regional federations, we have our federal uh, association who can support this way to develop our best talents. Uh, experience shows, statistics shows, my own experience, I'm now 40 years coach, uh, that we need, it takes, that's nearly a rule, 10 hours, sorry, 10,000, 10,000 hours of training. That makes about 10 years to develop a talent to a champion if the training will be done daily. 10 years. So maybe, Anel, the next slide. 
And then we can see. Can you hear me? Ah, yeah. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> in uh, in our uh, uh, track and field sport, we can. <coughs> sorry, we can. <coughs> Experience shows us that we have different stages of performing. Well, that's uh, the youngest uh, where we start with uh, uh, bring them to uh, with bringing them to uh, 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 getting used to good training is uh, 13 to 16 years. The second stage 17 to 20 years. Stage three 21 to 24 years. But in our experience, and statistics say, worldwide statistics, that the so-called golden age for track and field events starts with 25 years plus, 25 years older. So that does not mean there are, that we have a, an Olympic champion will be 22 years old, but that's an average what we can see here this, on this slide. That's the average, that's experience, that's statistic. And so what we want to say, what I wanted to show with this slide, that we, it needs patience. It needs a lot of patience to develop a talent from a beginner with good talent preconditions to a champion. You can't, uh, uh, if, if, if you, uh, you need uh, a flower needs to get water constantly and not five liters a day. So we need time, we need patience. A pregnancy will last nine months, not four. So we need a lot of time and patience to develop. The, uh, that's one of the main messages we give our coaches. Don't make too early. Don't make too early youth champions. That's a nice thing to have, but always have the look on the long-term development of a uh, of, of the athletes. Anel, next slide, please. Yeah, well, uh, the, first, the, the first stage, the 13 to 16 years, we, we want them to make, learn to train, to show them how to train. Well, we educate them in all parts of track and field, not only long jump or throwing or something like this, we want to show them all parts of track and field. We want to start with some physical education and to show them the basic technical things. Start as early as possible with the technical uh, development. And learn to handle, that's very important because there will be uh, problems if you don't care for it. Handle school and sport, the time management between school and sport is, is really important. Speak with the parents, include the parents uh, by working with those young athletes. And learn to work, start them to learn, work with trust, discipline, and respect. That's not so-called soft skills. In my opinion, that's hardware, because we have to work with young people. We work with human beings, and we have to teach them how the society, how the relationship between people, between in our society works in a good way. Well, and uh, we uh, 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 look for the greatest potential of these young athletes, but not only track and field, not too early specialization, even we let them do other sports, for example, some, some basketball or soccer, soccer very famous in Germany, handball or uh, gymnastics. And uh, in this age of 13 to 16 years old, uh, uh, not too early specialization, that's the most focus. The next stage, stage is uh, the 17 to 20 years, we try to make them train to train. We educate them in techniques, we, uh, they, they have to learn the basic techniques of all the uh, different throwing, jumping, and running and sprinting events. And they need to develop the skills, explosive. 
explosive strength, for example, or some kind of endurance, the, the different uh, uh, um, ways to develop endurance, uh, anaerobic, aerobic, lactate saining, we try slowly to show them how this works. And uh, we have, we start with a technical focus on strength, but most important is not to overload them with too much weights. Start, first of all, the technical way of strength training. Show them the right technique, the right way of, of the squats, or uh, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of exercise you choose out, but first of all, first of all, if you start with strength training, you start with a technical way of uh, education. And at that age, the, uh, at the older youth age, uh, 17 to 20, understand basics in nutrition. Because if you see how they are, uh, uh, ha, ha, the fast food, McDonald's, well, okay, it, it's fine, it's nice, but, but for, for a sport-specific nutrition, that's shit, sorry. That's, that's not a good nutrition because we need, <clears throat> if they are training, they need to have a good nutrition according to the, and supporting the training in the way of uh, leading a healthy life, regeneration. Regeneration, you can support regeneration by a good food, and not with bad fast food. And if you have a mixed training group, for example, older athletes, older athletes can help to support those younger athletes. Anel, next slide, please. Well, uh, the 21 to 24, well, that's the, that's the age where we want, that's this, this stage where we want to make them compete, uh, bringing them to the really good results. That does not mean, and, and they should be ready for international championships. That does not mean that we want to say uh, no U20 or U18 championships. Well, why not? They can do this, but that's not the end of the goal. That's not, that's an interval, that's a step in between, but not that's what they want. We want to develop them to train, compete later on. And uh, at this age, 21 to 24, best technique at the moment, uh, high level, high level of skills. Uh, they have to understand nutrition. They, they, they don't have to be teached in it. They have to understand the life balance. They have to understand that if Saturday is a hard training session, there is no disco at night. There has to be sleep to recover, to make regeneration on Saturday night and Sunday to start Monday the training week with the highest uh, body level they can. And learn focusing and developing the mental qualities. Dear colleagues, we all know, we all know, if we have a final where eight, where eight sprinters running the, eight, the 100 meters, they all have the best physical qualities. They are all good in shape. Those athletes will make the medals with the best mental attitude. Those athletes will win with the best mental preconditions, who get focused to know what they are doing, who have the best, the best head, as we say. And we try to uh, improve with these young 21 to 24 athletes, uh, year old athletes, more and more, and teach them, maybe with the help, you're not alone as a coach, maybe with the help of some sport uh, psychologist or some mental coaches to make them really strong. The mental training, is as much important as the strength training or endurance training. It's a very important tool for developing the best performance of the athletes. Well, the uh, uh, next slide, uh, Anel. Well, the top athlete, uh, 21 years plus. Well, so uh, it, at this age, uh, we have a uh, Normally, well, we, we train in groups. It depends. Some are groups. Some groups are small. Some groups are big. Some big, 
some some groups are mixed with with younger and older uh, athletes but if you work with athletes 25 years plus the, uh, the 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 work should be focused on the best individual concept you find for the athlete you know you know very exactly what is good for the athlete which stimulus he need and which stimulus that does work gives no response to the athlete so the individual concept is the most important if you're working with adult and experienced athletes to make them better. And the coach gets more and more in younger, with younger athletes, the coach is a kind of substitute as a father or they plays a lot of roles. But, but uh, uh, with 25 plus, the coach is, gets, gets more and more a consultant and a mentor to accompany, to accompany the athlete on his way uh, to the top and teach the athlete achieve the best results when it counts that are the top competitions that are the most important competition not a small competition wow i run best time i'm great no he's not great she's not great she's then great when she makes the medal when she gives her best yearly performance at the top competition that's what we want to focus on it and that's how we uh, try to uh, uh, educate our athletes. And top athletes should always know that they have a, a kind of a role model. They are an example for kids looking up to the athletes. That's important. They always should know about, uh, should have knowledge, which responsibility they have, which self-responsible they have as uh, young as, as athletes, as experienced athletes to young athletes. Well, and uh, the, that's the way we work with athletes in very, uh, very close sentences in very small ways. Maybe before we have a break, Anel, the next slide where we give a, a kind of overview for the coaches' education in Germany? Well, we have um, three levels. We have the C, the B, and the A level. Uh, well, the, the C level is the coaches' qualifications for, for, for the younger athletes. The B level for regional developed athletes, and the A level uh, is the um, the level for national standard athlete and with international perspective. Uh, the highest qualification we have in Germany is the so-called diploma level. And those who have the, those colleagues who have the diploma level uh, are mostly working full time. And uh, they, they get employed by federations, by, by regional federations or at the German uh, Federal Association, and um, well, the the payment is, uh, is is comes close to to that of teachers. I don't know how the uh, the teachers are in in. I know in the in the United States we have they get paid like uh, like college uh, professors. I I don't know really, but uh, uh, it's it's. It's a good. It's a good thing to. It's a good economic basic to work uh, as a coach. Well, and uh, in Germany we have the so-called National DLV Coaches Academy in in Mainz. It's a town near uh, Frankfurt, and we have ongoing coaches courses for education and for further education so that means all the levels a b and diploma levels have to come in some intervals maybe yearly or every two years for a weekend for two weekends uh, to get the newest informations to get the newest standard of uh, 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 training science and other uh, disciplines to establish their level their coaches level they have achieved and uh, since many years, we have in mind uh, the Academy for Foreign Coaches. That's a worldwide um, academy 
where applicants uh, are get, get getting the education to get to get a good education as a coach to get home to their home countries and work as uh, coaches there. So, colleagues, this was for the for for a short part uh, uh, overview. And uh, if it's okay for you, uh, and in the schedule, uh, and they're sent to me, I would then have a short break. Is it okay for you? Yes, Coach Rudiger. In fact, uh, after after this part one, uh, I'll be asking Coach Ernel for for his initial thoughts about your talk. Uh, and Erna later on will also facilitate our short question and answer. Uh, I'm just going to remove the presentation. Yes, okay, right. go on. Uh, yes, Coach Erna, continue. Coach Erna, uh, please, uh, your, your thoughts initially about the presentation of, of Coach Rudiger. Um, okay, thank you, Coach Nolly. Uh, I already prepared uh, some slides. I will show them now. One moment. Where is that? Okay, in three, two, one. Okay, um, so far, um, I already prepared. Uh, moment. Anyway, uh, it's not where. So, um, okay, uh, regarding the uh, the system, of important to have a strong base, the grassroots level, and at the same time, the level, if you notice, the system in Germany is very developmental, meaning there is a stage, there's a system, there's a regulation and at the same time there's a structure how things are done i think i believe important here is the involvement of the base involvement of the club system of members the organization in order to have the strong base in order to have up to the elite level and at the same time the continuing education of coaches is very important as you notice what Ludigal said earlier there is an academy uh, there's an academy of coaches in Mainz, which is uh, where coaches can do continuing education, which is very important nowadays to continue the learning process. The things that we learned way back some uh, many years ago will have an impact towards the development of athletes. So we need to change and we need to improve. We need to um, fill up our base, our knowledge system in order to be better because times are changing. I said, the digital age is also a concern for most of our athletes, how the lifestyle of our youth is also changing and the discipline as well is changing, but at the same time also affirm to our principles. So I think that would be all for me, Coach Nod. Uh, Nell, uh, before we break out into small groups, uh, are there any similarities between the Philippine setup and the Germany's, the setup in, in Germany? What are the... Um, important similarities or differences? Okay, I think the best similarity is on the concept of volunteer coaches. I think most of our coaches in the athletics are working in the grassroots level as volunteers. Unfortunately, most of them are not having good socioeconomic backgrounds or yung iba nga, libre lang or TY lang or kapag may laro lang or if there's a game, that's the time that they get paid. And I think this is also true for most of our coaches most of them are hardworking, but of course we follow this like the United States model, which is the school-based system. But I think that that is the quite difference. But the similarity is the hard work of our coaches, and I think that's the only thing that we can um, relate on on the on on the situation here in the Philippines. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know, I've 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 been aware of the challenges we have, and I've been seeing it. Um, a lot of our places don't even have a standard standard uh, oval to to practice uh, and i think uh, isa to sa pwede natin uh, this is one of the things that we can talk about in our breakout rooms uh, session uh, and this is where this is the groupings uh, for the groups and facilitators there are 10 groups today with 9 to 10 members per group for group number 1 we have coaches Koi and and Gian uh, group number two, Coach Ernel. Group number three, Coach Will. Group four, Coach Tolitz. Group five, Coach Oliver. Go group six, Coach Heidi. Group seven, co-facilitators, Coach Asli and Mary. Group number eight, Coach Belai. Group number nine, Coach Rico. And group number 10, Coach Stacks. This would be the two questions for our breakouts. 
how can we help promote sports like athletics to our community? And uh, Rudiger, uh, unlike Germany, and this is one of the big, uh, big this, uh, difference between your country and ours, athletics is really considered one of the minor sports. And uh, based on what you've heard from the initial sharing of Coach Rudiger, how can we help promote sports like athletics, like, um, like chess, like table tennis? Not, I'm not just speaking about athletics now, but the other sports outside the ball sports, how can we help promote it in our community? Not only in our school, but also outside the school. And then number two, what are the best strategies to create club-based sports programs in our communities? Uh, Rudiger was very clear in saying it. The Philippines follow the U.S. system, which is school-based. Unlike in Germany and many European countries where they follow club-based. By doing that, they have, it's easier to move athletes when they develop. It's easy to move him from one age group to another. So the question number two is asking everyone, both athletes and coaches, ano yung pwede nating magawa para mas mapromote natin lalo ang club-based sports programs in our communities? Uh, our facilitators have the questions in hand, so they will be able to remind you if you forget the, the questions. So you have 15 minutes total for the entire discussion. And after that, we will be coming back to the main forum. Thumbs up, everyone, if you are ready. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right. Enjoy the breakout rooms. Okay. And yes. then for the government, the cities, mayors, mayor naman sila mga sports program. Dapat include nila not only the ball games, but also the other sports. Yeah. Yeah. To promote everything, okay? Yeah. So, sports for all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then for the private, they have a great influence by, through money, no? Uh, look, marami mga ball games na sumigat because they pouring monies on these ball games like basketball and volleyball because of the commercials. So sana hopefully these uh, private sectors will also uh, cater the other sports para sumikat din. Yeah. Thank you, Coach Joseph. And maganda, uh, this is also a good comment from Enzo Williams. Uh, we've, we've always talked about having a standard oval, um, a, fee, uh, a rubberized track, but he also said about a rubberized track is not always needed to develop athletes. There are other ways to get workouts if you lack the facilities. This is where the art of coaching comes in, which is I'm, I'm happy because uh, this is just the final question I have for Ernel. Ernel, when you were in the Philippines, you were intentionally bringing athletes and coaches to Europe to see what Europe has to offer. Bakit ganun yung approach mo? Why was that the approach? Um, Coach Nolly, sa akin kasi, I believe that in order to see what is good, you must bring it to the excellent form. Um, the, way, the reason why I bring my athletes for the past um, three, three to four times in Czech Republic in Germany is for them to see how what is the culture is. Even that they may not reach level, of course, there are better, stronger, and faster athletes, but at least part of their lives, they will see what this excellence is all about. And I believe as what Sir Vic said, and what do we really want? What do we, what is excellence is all about? So through this kind of sharing of this book, excellence is all about. So to become a champion, but be at least, be with an excellent and a champion community so that you will have a better experience and better understanding how things are working, which, which can be um, bring to their um, lives. I will show you one second how it's, so one moment, Coach Nolly. Um, give me a few seconds, share screen, then, okay. One moment, one moment. Okay, so this is um, how they're doing in Czech Republic uh, recent, um, when I was there. So this how they are doing things there. And this is as one of the clubs. Why they're doing it? Because they love the sport and, the, and they believe that more events lead to better experience.
experience, experience leads to excellence. By building the community, building the sport, we can bring excellence, not only by being champions, but one way or another to be better persons. That's all, Coach Nolly. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Uh, and, you know, I remember one time, isa sa mga batang sinama mo sa, sa Ostrava, and I think it was the time that Usain Bolt ran in Ostrava. Yes. And then Henry Dagmil, an Olympian for the Philippines, also was in Davao, and he ran. And from my perspective, Henry Dagmil was running fast. He was really doing, you know, Olympian na Olympian. But then I remember that kid was saying, Coach, you should see Usain Bolt run. And I think ito yung point. When you see the excellence, the world excellence, you know the gap. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, Henry is a good friend of mine and I have so much respect for him. But when, when the standard was really the number one runner, and I think ito po yung dahilan why, that's the reason why uh, when we ask you to register, we ask who is the fastest person in, in the world. It's Usain Bolt. No? Because that was, that was my, I, I remember that moment when the, our athlete who saw Usain Bolt run in Ostrava was not amazed when he saw an, a Philippine Olympian running simply because he saw what excellence is all about. And uh, again, this is, a perf this is the reason why we bring Coach Rudiger here to also allow us to see more. Uh, this is my hope that every year, part of the Patafas the effort could be not just bring the usual people outside the country, but bring perhaps the outstanding depth ed coaches and bring them outside. If, it, if Europe is too far, perhaps Singapore can be an, a, a good destination at the moment. Just let them see a standard where it's not always the Philippines. And it is, it, this is my segue for the second part because part of the last part of coaches, uh, Coach Rudiger's uh, talk would also be more of his advice to us. So, Coach Rudiger, I turn over to you uh, the second part of your session. Silent round of applause for Coach Rudiger. Yes. Coach Rudiger. Coach yeah. 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 Okay. Coach. Coach. Uh, can we check with Coach Rudiger? Are we still? Yeah. Okay. One moment. Yeah, Coach Rudiger. Oh, so naka, naka mute siya. Sanile. Okay. All right. All right. He's You're good. He's You're okay. Back. All right. Now we can. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So uh, yeah, yeah. if if everybody can understand me, say yes. hello. <laughs> yes, yes, we can. Okay. Um, well, it was very interesting for me uh, to hear the specific circumstances and the problems and the special structure in in your country. I think it's uh, really uh, quite different from uh, Germany. I've been to many. Asian states. Uh, to, I've been to Vietnam, I've been to Indonesia, to Korea, to Japan, to, to China as with big competitions and even for coaches education. And I, 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 I learn, I always have to learn how does it, uh, the special facilities in the specific countries. And so what I am speaking about is my experience for you as a coaches and uh, uh, Anil asked me um, to speak about my coaching philosophy. Well, I can speak about my coaching philosophy maybe for one day or two days. And so uh, it's uh, for, for some minutes, it's, it's, it's really hard to, a little bit difficult to give the main information. But uh, so I try it with some words. And uh, first message I want to give you, dear colleagues, uh, is to be a coach is not a job, it's a passion. It doesn't matter in which structure you work. If you want to be a successful coach, be a passionate coach. Because when 
when I speak with younger coaches in Germany, a competition or if I want, if I tell them, hey, I want to call you on Monday. Uh, and no, Monday I have free, I have rest. And what about Tuesday? I have rest too because I had competition on Saturday and Sunday. So if these coaches, I, sometimes I tell them, hey, look for another job. If you're a coach, if you're a coach, you have to work 24-7. You're always a coach. You're not working in a company or something like this. You're a coach. You have worked with human beings and you have always spent your time to your athletes. Otherwise, look for another job. Well, um, there are some main competence and qualities uh, a coach should have. Maybe that's not something new for me, but sometimes we forget this. Uh, a coach should always be not a 100% specialist, but he should always know basic knowledge regarding training science, biomechanics, physiology, psychology, anatomy. You have to understand some theoretical basics because you work with athletes. The athletes have a biological system, and if you train them, you have to understand how the biological system works. I think that's a, uh, that's a precondition for you as a coach. And you need some uh, information about management, how to manage your life, how to manage the athlete's life, and how to manage the training process. And be always aware of your responsibility because the, the, the athlete gives you the best time of his lifetime. It's about 10 years where he has the best, highest level of performance and he relies, she relies on you that you make the best out of it. So always be aware of your responsibility you have when you work as a coach. Show always credibility. Be free of any uh, contradictions. You are the navigator of the training and competition process. You are the architecture. You are the architecture of performance. Well, we have the development in Germany and Europe that some managers, that some managers want to give us advice how to rule the training competition process. Forget it. You are the head. You're the head of the, the, the coach is the head of the training competition process, always. And help the, the, with the personality development of the athlete. Because if you educate the athletes to maturity and self-responsibility, you, you will have better results. Because only an, 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 an self-confident and self-responsible athlete is able, if he is alone, if he is alone in the stadium with 80,000 people, there is not a coach one meter beside him. You can advise him. No, he's alone. And you have to, to give him the, to, to, to educate to such a high level of self-responsibility and maturity to do this in the best way. And uh, show respect and caution towards uh, the athlete. That's, that's always a process, an interdependent process, education of coach and athlete. You educate, you educate the athlete, but the athlete educates the coach too. And so it's always, a, a, it's not a one-way street. There's always a very important process of both. You learn as a coach, I always, I always learn from big athletes. because. If they want to get big athletes, they normally they are big people with good characters. They are very specific. They are charismatic people. And so you have to learn from each other and think, think that's, uh, that's an, in, an important information. Uh, next slide, uh, Arnel. Arnel, you're listening to me. He might have... I think Ernel. It doesn't work. Yeah, the internet yeah, it connection. It froze. Yeah, bad connection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can proceed, Rudiger. I'm sure Ernel. Okay, will go I back can there. proceed. Well, um, 
as a coach, uh, when I speak about the main competence and the qualities, you have to show a constant willingness for dialogue with the athletes. Not only rule and from the top down, show empathy. Try to figure out and try to understand how the athlete works, how the athlete's thinking, how the way the, he, he feels, he understands, he learns. Try to find out his strengths and weaknesses. Because you have not only to develop the weaknesses, you always have to develop even the strength. And you, it will help you to understand, it will help you to understand the athlete better if you know how he's thinking, if you know how he's feeling, if you know how he reacts to your input that you give him as a coach. And one advice, especially to younger athletes, uh, sorry, to younger coaches, learn from experienced coaches. Not everything is true what they say, but they have a lot of experience and they have something to say. And if I reflect to my own work, look outside the box. Don't look just what other coaches do. Look for great people in our society. Look for people who have a good autobiography. Read books about big people who have a, a big standard in the world. Uh, there is something they have done and they have a good standing in the world. And that's the reason why. Learn from people. Learn not only, don't just focus on sports. Just have an outside look. Look outside the box and get your information from big people who influence the societies and the life. And dare, dare to try new things. Don't always say, hey, I'm now 20 years coach. I know how things work. I know I had a lot of success. Don't tell me something new. No, time goes on. There are new, uh, there's new experience. There's new science. There are new ways in medicine. There are new ways in uh, technical movement. Have it's all, if you're working with athletes, it's always a kind of adventure because you have to try for new things. You have, uh, if, if you work with athletes, if you work with athletes many years, you will see that the, sometimes the stimulus you give shows no more reaction. You have to put in new stimuli. You have to find new training programs. You have to change your uh, some some inputs, not the same exercises, other loads, other regenerations, other peaks, other periodization. It's you you can always be uh, uh, you have to have the standard that oh I did it twenty years so uh, to year twenty one I will have the same success. Well, uh, I have spoke to many athletes who finished their career. And who told me, hey, uh, sometimes I did, I, may, I might have been a better athlete, but sometimes I did not understand. I did not understand what the coach really meant. So always check what you're saying, what is your output, and what is the input of the athlete. Is this the same frequency? Does the athlete really get what you want to say? Is it 100% the in your information you give? Does it have a 100% response to the athlete? I think you always have to check if this is, uh, if that does work in the optimum way. So find out if your athlete, what kind of competition type is he? Is, she? is he anxious? Is he aggressive? Is he self-confident? Find out to how, how the character of the athlete is and give the specific inputs to this specific variation of his character. One more rule, be a networker. Only a team, a competence team, will make sure that you have success. In my competence team, 
Uh, I have uh, a doctor, a physiotherapist, a biomechanics, uh, a psychologist, an athletic coach for special athletic exercises. So be a networker, but be a networker with the best you can get. If you want to achieve best results, take the best you can get it and sort them out, check them, and always have an interaction to them. There's an ongoing communication, an ongoing interaction that uh, guarantees uh, success. Well, if we don't have, uh, we cannot see the slides. Um, I give you, I'm a, well, track and field, track and field is an individual sport, but we have some relays, four by one or four by four relays, so that are small teams. So even in track and field, even in track and field, we have some kind of team building. And team building does have other rules than we do it with individual work. So for me, when I coach, and I was coaching very successful four by one teams, I always had the kind of pyramid with some basic, with some basic qualities that influence successful team building, respect, Faith, discipline, that's a basic, that's the bottom. Communication and emotion, the next step. Communication is a yearly process, is a daily process. There is always communication, non-verbal and verbal. Even if you drive with an athlete three hours in the car to a competition, there is communication if you don't speak a word with him. There is always communication, be aware of the social and the social interdependence from coach to athlete. If you have the communications, figure out what kind. It's communication from coach to athlete, communication in small groups, communication to the big group. There is, that's not always this, the same point of time where communication is uh, is the right thing you, 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 you uh, check. So sometimes you have to find out, now it's better to speak with one athlete about a special problem we have. We never speak about this in a big group. It depends, but always be aware, always take care for communications and give the team a clear goal orientation, but not only once a month, maybe every week, every day. That's our goal we want to achieve. What? Do you do if let me give an example if the 100 meter final is at the 26th, let me say 26th of August, send the athletes emails every week. What will you do at the 26th of August this year? You will reach the final, support his confidence. Always clear goal orientation, clear goal orientation for the athletes. And uh, it will help you to fulfill the expectations you have and your team will have. Motivate and inspirate them. You may say that's the same, that's not the same. There's a difference between motivation, motivation and inspiration. That's a different. If I motivate an athlete, I will tell him, hey, in the warm up area, Hey, you're good. You look good. Technical is good. You're strong. You look good. So we will have a good competition. Go inside the stadium and you will make a good competition. That's, you can hear me? Yes. Pretty good. Aya. 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 That's, that's, uh, uh, next slide. Next. I speak about motivation and inspiration. That's the next slide. Next slide. Uh, and that'll because, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm looking. Uh, maybe I'm in time. <laughs> so um, I speak. I spoke about the motivation. I say there's a different to in, inspiration. Motivation is. Let me repeat it. Hey, you're good. You will make it. You will do it. You're great. You look good. So go in and compete. That's motivation. Inspiration is a step higher. If I want to inspire the same athlete, I will tell him or her, even with work with women, they are able to, to work with more imagination. 
and uh, tell them, hey, you go now into the stadium and think of it, how it feels to stand after the competition on the podium, how the ceremony, the winning ceremony, how it feels to get the medal around your neck. That's a kind of inspiration. And uh, you always have to choose what kind, how the athlete, what is the best for the athlete. Some are rational tips, they are analytic tips, types, sorry, and some are emotional types. Find out what athletes you have and find the correct speech. As a coach, you should play, you, you need to have, you have to play all the rules, all the sounds, if, because you work because you work with uh, athletes, with human beings. And always believe in success. That's most important. Believe daily in your success with the athlete and your team. Because we all know, doubters never win. And winners never doubt. That's the rule. All, for all successful teams, for all successful athletes. And... Uh, well, uh, and uh, the yeah. advice for coaches I can give. Uh, I will, a colleague of mine said it in the best words, I can do it better. I cannot do this better. The most important factor in coaching is to be yourself. A lot of coaches try to copy other coaches or other programs. There's a lot of discussion on whether a coach should be scientific or whether one coach should coach as if it's an art. Every coach should find a personal way of coaching, the way that is best for oneself. Because first of all, coaching is the art of communication. And I think this is very some words, the best advice I can give as an overhead to young coaches to become successful coaches. Well, let me come to the end. And uh, I know coaches, next slide, uh, advice, uh, NL. Well, uh, coaches, Coaching calls upon many skills that are gained by the combination of experience and knowledge. But take care of too much overload by internet. There is, even with older coaches, I see it. Young coach, well, they are looking to internet. And they are looking to new exercises. Well, and they bring it in the training and always new, 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 new. But take care of it. Always know that experience and knowledge is the most important thing. Be open. Be open to everything the internet shows you. But be a little bit critical. Be a little bit critical. Dare new things. Surely you have to do this. But be always critical by too much overload by internet. Well, some of the knowledge can be learned on coaching courses. It's necessary for you to understand basic things, to understand theoretical things. But it means little without practical application with the coaching process. And novice coaches can benefit from regularly working alongside an experienced mentor coach. No one is born as a coach. And the way is long to get an experience and successful coach but always remember, coaching is passion, fire and emotion, and it's not just a job. Thank you so far, dear colleagues. Let's give Coach Rudiger a big silent round of applause. <laughs> Nell, we can please, uh, yeah, thank you. i uh, just like to read uh, some comments uh, from Coach Belay, sometimes it's hard to rely on different institutions, organizations to get moving for the sports. Yes, we should involve the LGU, barangays, etc. 
but we can also educate how to properly start clubs and engage the community. I agree that when you do this, you have, you have, you have a built-in fan base for the club. I think this is true, especially for, even for, for team sports and more so especially for the athletics. Uh, I think I, I also saw uh, Big Africa saying coaches should not only have technical knowledge of the sport, they should also have a discipline, discipline-based knowledge. Agree. And Coach Rudiger mentioned earlier, in, in, um, and this struck me, he mentioned about part of growing is really read books about big people who have high standards about life, about how things should be done. And that novice coaches can learn much from an experienced mentor coach. These ideas are very timely for our second reactor, Stax Sabeliano, who has really, this is all about learning. And Stax, you are the performance coach of this new group in Mindanao running out of poverty. Coach, uh, and I, I've seen you here, Stax. You have, you have been learning so much from, from Coach Tony Benson, a former direct, uh, program director of the Gintong Ally Program of the Philippines. Perhaps one of the, if not one of the few successful programs in sports that we did as a country. Uh, Stax, can you, can you share your thoughts about it? Mahal, gaano kahalaga ang matuto sa mas nakakaalam? Yung bina, ginadala ka. I remember Coach Tony mentioning this. And this has bothered a lot of young coaches. Only an Olympian can best bring someone to the Olympics. Stax, your thoughts? Nakamute ka, Stax, no? Yeah, can you hear me, Coach? Yes. Tony, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, coach, uh, re- regarding my, inter- uh, my, my, my piggy bank, big piggybacking with Coach Tony, uh, yeah. the first thing that I really, I, really, I really appreciate from him is that uh, he first hit me in the mind. Sa utak, sabi niya, coach, uh, can you with... brief, ano lang, brief ano lang, background Tony Benson? Sino po ba? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Tony Benson is, uh, is, is an Olympian in 1972. He was the number five. 5,000 K runner. Then uh, in 19 uh, in 1992, he was now he, he was the head coach of the Australian track and field. But in 1981, in uh, 1979 to 1981, he was the head coach of uh, Gintong Ally, no, together with Michael Keon. During the time that Coach Benson was 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 uh, the coach of the Gintong Ally, the Philippines was the last in Southeast Asian Games. In that small span of time, the Philippines became the number one. Courtesy of Legia de Vega, Hector Bigayo, El Mamuro, Serenato del Prado. Then, from number six, uh, number 26 in Asia, the Philippines became number six. Courtesy of the gold medal of uh, 100 meters of uh, Legia de Vega. So, Coach Tony Benson really brings up no, the level of mindset for coaches and for, the, for, for, for athletes that, that, that he that he coaches. For example, lang si Hector Bigayo was a three-time Olympian. He is the only athletic Filipino athletic uh, simple chase 3,000 meters that went all the way to the semifinals. And at that time in 1988 Seoul Games, he was the only Asian semifinals semifinalist. So, and Hector Bigayo came from a very poor family in Mountain Province. Coach Tony Benson really telling us, no? Na anybody, any Filipino can be an Olympian stocks. Any Filipino can be an Olympian. To do it, I don't really know until he brought me one time in Langob, in a barangay here in Davao, in Langob. Just, lang, uh, just a follow-up to, to Enzo Williams. Sabi Enzo Williams, you don't need a truck that is rubber rice. Sabi niya sa akin, si Coach Tony, sabi niya, stocks in this particular mountainous area, you can, you can develop an Olympian. The question is, is the coach and the athlete willing to bring you there? Kasi kung titingnan mo yung pinakita kanina ni Coach Rudiger, it's a long-term athlete development from 13 years old up to 24 years old. Is a coach willing to bring an athlete for 11 years until the time he will become a high-level Olympian? Is the athlete also willing, willing to be to trained me. every day? You know, consistency sinasabi every day. 10,000 hours. I heard that from you, Coach Snowley. 10,000 hours, outliers, no? Is the coach and the athlete willing to work together for 11 days to develop 
somebody who will be an Olympian. Yun ang napakahirap hanapin. Napakahirap hanapin. No? Sa coach, I don't know, it can be developed, but for athlete and coach, kaya si Michael Phelps na, for the rest of his career, for more than 20 years, isa lang ang coach niya. Bob Because Moore, they work every day, every day for six hours. Every day for six hours with only one coach. What happens in Philippine setting? Once you develop an athlete, somebody will take it. No? And somebody will take it. And, and the national program of the government is to bring that athlete itapon dun sa coach outside. So what happened to the, to, the, to the development of the athlete? Hindi niya alam what's the process. I think that's all coach Tony, no? It's really hard to develop unless the coach and the athletes are willing to work for 11 years. And that's very difficult to find. Gintong Alay was very, very successful. You know why? Because athletes were developed in one area with a very high competitive coach. Sabi niya, you are no different from a Kenyan. You are no different from an Australian. You can become an Olympian. Why? Because we train consistently every day. And, and one thing that I, 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 I encircled here, yung 21 to 24 years old, no? sabi pa dito ni Coach Rudiger, an athlete should be ready for international championships. Coaches like Tony Benson, our mindset in his athlete, na kahit ang katabi mo, malaki sa'yo, matangkad sa'yo, what happened? International races, panalo na tayo, pa tayo natalo because we chicken out. Nawawala, bumabalik yung pagka-smallness ng mindset natin. I think that's very important. Umpisa pa lang dapat, when we go to the International League, ang mindset natin, we are big time. Nawawala eh, nawawala, natatakot. We are, in that international stage, the pressure was, was very, very big. In basketball, free throw na lang, panalo na tayo eh. But the pressure of, in the big league, we are, tama si ano eh, last na lang ito, Coach Tony, ah, Coach, Coach Noli, one minute lang. If you, if, you, if you read back the article of Nick Joaquin, A Heritage of Smallness, nandun lahat yung root, rooted for us to play it small, not play it big. To play it big, really, na, ilabas, it's really something that you have to take out from you, na you are a big time, you are a big athlete, no? You, you can do it international. So it's very difficult because the term really that Coach Rudiger showed us during the first session was a long-term athlete development. From 13 years old, no? learn to train, train to... And learn to train pa lang. In two years' time, the athlete is already gone. Nawala na. Nag-aaral na sa ibang school. Nakuha na lang ng school na nagbibigay ng scholarships. Uh, for whatever reason, lumipat ng coach. Kasi yung nanay, mas gusto yung coach na ito. Ito kasi mas... The process is there. Eh. So, for me, no, unless, unless we are, we are, we, we can find our coach that's really, sabi nga ni Coach Rudiger, it's, it's a passion. That passionate enough to give 11 years of his time. No? An athlete who is passionate enough to be trained every day for 11 years. We can never develop a high-level athlete. We can never develop a high-level athlete. That's why Gintong Alay was very successful. Because the government, no, a coach that is a high level, they brought it inside. Then athletes were really trained every day, mindsetting every day that you can do it, no, to get, uh, side by side with anybody. There's no difference between a Filipino and a Caucasian. Sa atin lang, pag natabihan tayo ng matangkad, iba yung kulay, nagchichicken out na tayo eh. Even in swimming, pag natabihan ka ng matangkad, nawawala yung ano yung pagkaagila natin. Uh, I think yun din no so umpisa pa lang dapat mawala sa atin yung yung, yung smallness uh, mentality, yung small mentality. So yun lang siguro no, yun lang siguro we started the Tendabo, yung yung run out of poverty in fact, yung run out of poverty coach Tony before when we are starting four years ago. Mayroon siyang dinadagdag no. Run out of poverty, gintong muli, no? Gintong muli. We bring back the, 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 the system that we had in Gintong Alay. Gintong Alay, for the purpose, uh, for, for, the, for the understanding of Coach Ridiger, it's a uh, gold offering, no? Gintong Alay, it's a gold offering. A program before by the late Ferdinand Marcos. Uh, hindi masyadong bureaucratic, no? 
everything, if there's any, uh, something that we need, only Michael Pion can tell. Bilhin yan, kailangan yan. If we need something, some training tools, hindi dadaan ng burokrasya, hindi dadaan. Napakabilis, napakalis ng desisyon. Nung sinabi niya, kailangan ko si Coach Tony from Australia, immediately, wala nang, ano, wala nang approve ng, 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 ng isang commissioner. Nadala niya agad. So, I think that's, that's one thing that, that's really, that's really uh, uh, detrimental for, for athletics dito sa Pilipinas. Napakahirap. And secondly, athletics is not a popular sports dito. Kaya napakahirap gumawa ng club. Nung nakita ko 700 clubs, there are 700 clubs in Germany. 7,000. Ah, sorry, sorry, 7,000. With 81 million population. We have 120 million population. Run out of poverty when we started running in, in, in Blue Nights. Kami lang ho yung club na hindi school team ang ginamit. Hindi pangalan ng school ang ginamit. Hindi pangalan ng LG yung ginamit. Ang ginamit, ano yan? Run out of poverty. Sa lingkusa pa nga ngayong araw, wala kami mga sapatos eh. Nakaka, nakaka, nakakaiyak na minsan because the kids, nung nakita lang yung rabbi rice, ano, ginawa nilang kama. Sabi niya, ang lambot, coach, ang lambot. So, I think uh, how to popularize athletics in the Philippines. I, I don't know how to do it. We started doing it, but it's very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. Even going to the barangay kapitan, even going to the principal of the school, their priority is, is education. Sabi niya, no. We, we cannot lend you our kids at 4 o'clock to run. They, they have still uh, ano, PE. Ganyan. So it's very difficult to get the support of the school, to get the support of the barangay. And there's a technical man, walang bayad, no? an Olympian willing to give everything he has. If, sometimes we, we buy shoes. Kami gastos namin minsan para lang makatakbo yung mga bata. Coach Emil also is giving shoes eh. Kaya natutuwa kami pag sumasali kami sa Blue Knights, no? Mayroon kami mga shoes na para panulunan. So, it's very difficult. It's it's not readily accepted. Kaya isa yung sa challenge natin, no? In clubs, ah, yung, 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 yung LGU. Secondly, yung, yung school. That's why, diretso kami sa mga parents ng bata. No? Can, can you bring your kids? Can, can you lend your kids after 5 o'clock? Pag alis na lang. Kaya ginagami kami. Gabing-gabi na kami minsan. Tumatakbo kami. No? sa so, oval ng mga elementary school. Hindi namin alam kung ano yung natatapakan namin. No? So that's how difficult it is really to develop athletics. Thank okay. you, Coach Tax. No? Thank yeah, you very much you. For, for, again, run out of poverty is one of those examples that I saw really that has stopped the experience of a seasoned, seasoned coach uh, who, who used to be an athlete and is trying its best to, to create a club culture in the community. And again, uh, Creating a club in the Philippines is really, really very difficult. I'm going to turn over to Coach Ernel. Uh, just two questions to Coach Rudiger based on what, what, what we've heard, what you've heard. Two questions we can ask from Coach Rudiger before we have our final wrap-up. Okay, um, Coach um, Noli. So, of course, um, it's, I believe it. But, of course, if you have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, like one or two, Please type it on the chat, chat box. So thank you, Coach Rudiger, for extending your uh, time with us. Um, I believe uh, what uh, Coach Tuck said earlier, it's really um, bringing out the best out of the athlete, making our structures really work for us well. I believe that it's through constant collaboration by not leaving one person behind or one group behind and making each of us working together by bringing more athletics events, not only Palaro, not only regional, not only city, but I was in Ostrava when I was in Mannheim, when I was in different places in Germany, I saw that the community is building events. I remember one time Michael German, the assistant of uh, the vice um, director of MTG Mannheim, told me that there is an event in Heidelberg. We went there. When we were in, I think, in uh, we saw another event. So for, la for like two weeks, we were able to see two events in Germany. So that's why it's very important to have this kind of ideas. Okay. Yes. Okay, sorry. A uh, question. Um, so to continue, uh, I believe, um, so I, other comments. Um, okay, so question. Coach Rudiger, what can we still think do to make 
things better in our current situation now for athletics. Yeah. To make things better in the current situation in your country or in Germany? Um, I think um, in, in overall <clears throat> uh, now, uh, what do you do now in, here, there in Germany? <laughs> Well, um, <clears throat> we see a development of uh, international training groups. I think training. if we see, we spoke about uh, U USA. In the USA, we have the college system, but that's the full truth. That's not the full truth. We know that uh, there are uh, the best coaches uh, have some athletes from all over the world. And they collect them and uh, they're training together in big international training group and in my experience is to help even countries for development i said i was i was three weeks one and a half years ago i was three weeks in vietnam they asked me to support the coaches to give advice in, in sprint and hurdles and long jump and something like this but it, i always said hey if i if i come to you for one or two weeks and show you how things, how you to train and how you uh, uh, deal with your athletes. That's only a spot. That's not an ongoing situation. Come to our country if it's possible. Come to our country and learn like Anel did. Anel did come to Germany and he watched people and he said, he, now he knows some knowledge about the clubs in Germany. I think. That's we have to go to the countries where, where they work and we have to go to those foreign countries and, and give support. But everything depends on the financial things. That's the, 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 the money the governments give for the development of sports. They invited me again to come to Vietnam, but there was no money. And uh, so uh, that's, that's the thing, sports, sports needs more money in the own countries and for foreign countries and the international de development can grow together if there is a more everything in political and economy ways goes together and but in the sports the the, 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 the the working together in the sports community there has to spend much more money from the given by the government i think so we can have better results and have more participants in Olympic Games. Okay, thank you, thank you Coach. Yeah. Yes, Coach Nodi, continue, sorry. Yeah, uh, in this, in, uh, we are now in the last few minutes and then I would just take this opportunity to have our final breakout rooms and just answer this question. And I think this is for, so that everybody would have a, a sense of, uh, you can digest what you have learned. Answer one of these two questions. Um, what is the biggest lesson you got from the forum? That's the first question, or you can answer the other one. What struck you in what our speaker and reactor said? Ano yung sinulat nyo? Just, uh, just, just say it. I just share it to the group. This is very quick discussion, three minutes only, and then we're going back to the main group and have our closing uh, session. Okay, thumbs up if you're ready. Thumbs up, final.
Hi, Coach Air. All right. Uh, again, before we end this, I would ask, again, I would like to say thank you to, to everyone who, who, uh, who are able to participate with, especially the, the regulars. Uh, Coach Britt, nakita ko. Gang, thank you. Vic, thank you very much. Uh, and our Coach Dindo, thank you very much. Uh, Drolly, thank you. All the way from, from Ilagan, Isabella, thank you very much. Uh, before I give the floor to Coach Rudiger for his final thoughts, allow me to just share some few reminders. Uh, in this, always we would uh, remind everyone in this time of ECQ, especially na extend pa sa ibang bahagi ng Pilipinas, stay connected, stay relevant, stay significant. Uh, do join us here uh, in our last week of online forum. These are the schedule after today. We have Coach Christian Narciso, an Italian basketball coach, on May 13, again, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And the last speaker, the 21st speaker. So we have already hosted 21 online forums. By Friday, we have Coach Owen Southgate, an English football coach, to talk about instilling values, lifelong values through sports. I also like to plug... Uh, um, Women in sports, every Fridays, uh, Coach Heidi Ong, one of our facilitators earlier, is hosting a Zoom forum every 4 p.m. So please also support that. Same time, we, uh, same thing with Belay Fernando, one of our facilitators, every Thursday, grow her game every Thursday, 3 p.m. And again, special thanks to our online facilitators, Coach Belay, Coach Asley, Coach Rico, Coach Will, Coach Tolitz. Coach Gian, Coach Sandy, Coach O, and our guest facilitators uh, today, Coach Heidi and Coach Ernel, Coach Stax, and Coach Koy. And I would always say this, pag natapos lahat na ito at magkita-kita tayo, shake hands tayo, yakap kung pwede, at sikapin natin mas maging mabuting tao at maayos na Pilipino. Uh, with that saying, I would like to uh, ask everyone to please give a silent round of applause for Coach Rudiger. Coach Rudiger, your final message to all of us here, 80 plus, 90 plus earlier. Your final words, Coach. Thank you. Thanks a lot uh, for <clears throat> your uh, participation. It was a great pleasure for me to take part in this forum. I learned a lot. Thank you. And again, everyone, uh, may I just ask for our class picture? So if you can put yourself in video mode. Video. And then four shots. One, two, smile. All right, that's the first. Second. One, two. And last. All right, final. One, two, three. All right, again, special thanks also to Coach Edward Ko of the national team. Thank Coach Edward. Maraming salamat po. And to everyone who have been joining us since March 27 until today. So be safe, everyone. Thank you. Coach, Coach Rudiger, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. What's a little? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. See you Wednesday. See you Wednesday. Thank you, Coach. Just, just briefly, thank you, thank you. Just say thank you. Thank you. Coach Rudiger, stay with us for a while. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Let's go. Be, be safe. Be safe. Stay well. Thank you, everyone. Um, join us. Stay safe. Happy day. Mental wellness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gang, maraming salamat. Gang, thank you. Bye. Thank you, po. Thank you very much again and we would wait for your notes so that we could also share to Coach Rudiger. Coach Rudiger, we will also be sending you notes of your talk so that you can use it for future references. Thanks a lot. Thank right. you. So guys, maraming salamat. Belais, Coach Heidi, Koy, thank you very much. Stay safe. See you Wednesday, 3 p.m.
Okay. Ingat ko, Bye, Mary. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. See you, see you. See you. Thank you. Ingat po, mga boss. Yes.